the next uh, we will I will request uh, Sukhana Velo to make her presentation. Um, we will be you know, 15 uh, kind of thing so that we can have some time for discussion. So uh, very good afternoon and uh, thank you once again Krishnakanda and the um, university for inviting me. And I do apologize to Anand um, Sharma created some confusion in between when I said I will not be there the last yesterday when my program was cancelled, I again told him that yes. Because as Chandana mentioned, uh, women, something to do with women is a subject very close to my heart. And so as far as possible, I try to, especially when one page of my life is already over, I work with Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship come out and now um, on, the, on a different organization, I try to give as much as time for mentoring of women. I, I mentor mostly women entrepreneurs, but women in general. So definitely when I heard the word women, as Chandana mentioned, is something I thought I would definitely like to give my time here. Um, a very apt um, uh, topic being um, you know, taken up, we need to discuss, deliberate, and uh, you know, understand what is it. I mean, why women are not coming? Are women not coming in large numbers? Are women not getting into leadership roles? Now, these are questions which we really need to debate, discuss, and have our own perspectives on that. Um, definitely, I'll be somewhat repeating what Chandana has said because you know, as women, when you reach a particular position, we face the same challenges. And I think most women would be facing a lot of challenges, yet, because, uh, in, in spite of all challenges, there are women who have excelled. We have large number of examples of women who have excelled. So the percentage may be less, but since they have excelled, definitely it's not just you can't be all the time blaming the environment or the, or environment or the ecosystem. Let's look at the ecosystem first. When we say the ecosystem, um, what do we understand? We understand that you know who are the what are the major factors which is influencing what we do in life as a women. So there is this um, your family, right? She was talking about conditioning. Um, we get conditioned by the society, by the family. So that's a part of the ecosystem in which we grow up. You know, so definitely that has a role as to what values are imbibed in us. What are the do's and don'ts which are constantly told to us right from the time, knowingly, unknowingly, by the society? Few points which she already mentioned about, you know, when when is the time to get married? When is the time to, you know, have a child? So uh, I think today society has the pressure on women is even more today uh, because you are supposed to be superhuman, right? Um, and I, uh, particularly when we talk about empowerment, is it only economic empowerment? Or is it also emotional empowerment, intellectual empowerment? So we have to look at, you know, the emotional empowerment, the intellectual empowerment, which is so very important. Uh, so, you know, when, uh, let me just give, uh, now most of the people who are sitting here are from the next generation. Now when I look at you, I, you know, sometimes I think when mothers, they talk about their daughters being educated, giving them all the facilities to have the education, etc. When the time comes, they say that, no, it's time now to come back. I've seen a lot of my friends whose daughters have really done well, um, got a job in the corporate sector elsewhere, but the mother would say, that now maybe you leave your job, come and do something here. Because now is the time to get married. Then she gets married. After some time, again, as she said, it's a time to have a child. So what are we doing, trying to do with the daughter? What are we doing, trying to do with the uh, uh, daughter? So that's important. So that's the sort of conditioning which has an impact on us, definitely. Then as we go to work, it's the uh, work environment. We are lucky if the environment is more women friendly. Not always, particularly in the corporate, it's a cutthroat competition everywhere. Um, things are definitely changing now because people have been, the corporates are trying to be more inclusive. But nevertheless, unknown you know, biases are there, particularly in various government setups, it's even more. And um, unknowingly, it's uh, there. And then um, I always used to say a woman often has to be a more than a man to be prove that she's equal to a man. So that is some sort of a thing which I have, I don't know, when we hear about 
um, from others. Uh, so that is one thought, that is one experience I always have. To be considered equal, you have to be a little bit more than the man. Otherwise, you are. Small, small biases are always there. But the bias which is there, it's also on us to break that. For example, let me give an example. When I was with Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship, I was young then. So we used to have a lot of events. So whenever there was an event, when the responsibility was shared amongst all the faculty who were there, it would always say, I say that we were two women faculty then, not all others were men. Then, you know, we're putting the gamusa, putting the flowers is always a women's responsibility. She has to look nice, wear a nice makeup shadar, sari, and then come to Rishi attire. Rest of the duties would be done by, you know, going to the airport, looking after tea, etc. again, serving was... So I protested then. So I immediately said, I'm not good at all this. So I will take some other responsibility and let someone who's good at you know, taking care of all these things can take care. So it's also the voice that we have. We have a voice, so it's important for us to be also, what I said, you know, empowered. Empowerment, let us look at empowerment from a broader perspective. What's empowerment? So empowerment has a lot of other nuances also. It's not just economic empowerment. Uh, again, I would share something which Chandana has already shared, uh, Sheryl Shadwell. I think this is a must read for every girl. Women work and the will to work. It's leading in women work and the will to work. Uh, women empowerment, she very nicely defines by saying it's a, like a chicken and egg problem. It says that once the external barriers are broken, women will be empowered. The second line also said we need more women in leadership positions so that the barriers are broken. Isn't it a chicken and egg problem? So a lot of onus also lies in what I would say. Because the ecosystem or the environment will not immediately change. Yes, there are attempts to change, but then it's also on us. Do we have the aspiration? Are we empowered? Uh, so this is something, I don't know, I would like to ask, what do you think? What do you think? Don't you think a lot of things are also on us? Remember what I said, there are women who have done well, there are women who have, but again, when you look at, you know, the Fortune 500 companies, out of the 500 companies, the latest figure says, says that only 28 have reached the CEO position. Look at positions in which women have led organizations. The percentage would be very less. What could be the reason? Yes, definitely. There are so many issues. Like, you know, you have to have your family, your child, you take a second seat, you want, sometimes you, you know, deliberately opt for something that, you know, gives you less responsibility because you have no other option. Sometimes you leave the job, take a break, then to come back, how much seriously you come back. So there are issues, but then I feel it's a lot. We have to be our own sort of masters here. It's very, very important. Let me talk from my experience since I, um, you know, were, were, uh, have last maybe 20, 25 years with mostly with entrepreneurs. And when we say entrepreneurs, uh, we have a lot of women entrepreneurs and North East has the percentage of women entrepreneurs are more compared to the rest of the country. But again, in the, I talked about the corporate space. Look at the entrepreneurial space. Although the numbers are much more than the national average, but if you look at the size of enterprises, the type of enterprises which are led by women, you will find that women are mostly in some, you know, clustered around certain sectors. When we say women entrepreneurs, what are the sectors which come to your mind? Hand of handicraft, beauty, then Tailoring, beauty parlor. Very low. Very low. Uh, it's like around, uh, according to the study, it's like around uh, almost uh, 2 to 3 lakhs. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Why not? So it is also, you know, why am I deciding only on these sectors? Is it a comfort level? Does it mean, and what happens when I'm only concentrating on few sectors? Women are not taken seriously. Women are not taken seriously. They would mostly be said that, you know, there are women entrepreneurs, so you do an exhibition. So you'll find all those exhibitions coming in, all women sitting there and you know, you know, that is not, that's not, you know, so we, again women are not taken seriously there. What about not getting into other sectors? What about not getting into technology? Even I have seen from my experience, even if I'm from a technology background, when I'm part of women, I'm mostly doing a lot of, you know, these women, uh, there's nothing wrong in that. That is one. The second point, you know, that this is where I'm talking about entrepreneurship as a profession. This is where you know we need to really think seriously. Is there an aspiration deficit? Is there an aspiration deficit amongst women? And then we try to put it across that because of the environment, because my husband is not cooperating, because my family is not cooperating, so I have not been able to be. Am I taking an excuse somewhere? Why, you know, I've asked, I tried to uh, push a lot of women, you know, why, you know, they're very happy, some little earning is coming in, so I'm, I can tell society that I'm earning something, and that's enough for me. So, uh, these are um, issues which um, uh, we have to really look at um, and ask ourselves these questions. Like, you know, this, uh, it's, uh, what I would like to say is, I think I'm already crossing my line, but the onus is not on us. Any challenge which comes in, can I convert it, that into an opportunity? I have done that all my life. And I think anyone who uh, makes, tries to make a little mark or reaches a particular position is always that the woman needs to be very, very enterprising. Irrespective of, whichever, irrespective of whichever profession you are. So that's the message. I already get an indication from Jerry that I need to uh, go close here. So thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Bailo, for this excellent insights. Uh, we have had two things. One was on ecosystem. And Bailo was also talking about it is one part of the story is ecosystem, but at the same time, we should also look back uh, onto us. Uh, to find out what are the you know, issues that are preventing us 